Welcome to the Chad G. Ortho OT Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Guerrero. I'm an orthopedic occupational therapist, strength and conditioning coach, sports trainer, and I hold over 40 specialty certifications in manual therapy, orthopedics, and sports medicine. On this podcast, we will discuss everything orthopedic therapy, sports medicine, and more. If you're a therapist, health and fitness professional, or someone just wanting to learn more about the orthopedic and sports medicine world, then this is a podcast for you. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Chad G Ortho OT Podcast. I'm your host, Chad Guerrero, and today we're going to be talking about the difference between retrocalcanal bursitis and Achilles tendonitis. Now, if you're not a therapist or clinician, that probably does not sound all that exciting to discuss, but if you're having foot pain or uh, pain in the back of the heel, um, this is something that that you, you really want to listen to, and I'll try to be as uh, uh, concise as I can at helping you determine maybe which one you have going on, and then how to fix it. Now, there's all sorts of foot conditions, right? Like there's plantar fasciitis, there's tendonitis, and tendinopathies, and impingement syndromes, and all these things. So that's going to be for another episode. But today, we're going to specifically talk about Achilles tendonitis versus retrocalcanal bursitis. So let's get started. I'll kind of tell you the history uh, between both. The Achilles tendon, you know, everybody... I say everybody. Most people probably know the Achilles tendon is back there on the back of the heel uh, and our calf muscle and the soleus muscle and all that, the back back there attached to this. And it assists with uh, plantar flexion. It's our main muscle that helps us to go up on our tiptoes. Now, there's other muscles that are involved in that as well. The flexor halysis, the, the great toe flexor and some other stuff that helps with that. But generally speaking, that's our main uh, with plantar flexor of the foot. And Basically, the uh, bursa, the bursa is a fluid-filled sac. We have bursas in our body. They're basically like, kind of like spacers, keeping you know, tissue from rubbing on bone and things like that. So they just kind of give a little bit of cushion, almost like an insole in a shoe. And so there is a bursa sac uh, on the back of the calcaneus bone. That's your heel bone, hence the term retro behind, right? So retro calcaneal bur- bursa that can become inflamed and that develops bursitis. Now, here's the thing. The Achilles tendon sits right on top of that bursa sac because basically the bursa sac is protecting the Achilles tendon from touching the back of the heel bone, that calcaneus bone. And the difference that you're gonna notice is location with pain typically. So the Achilles tendonitis is going to be a little bit uh, higher up usually, maybe one inch or so higher than the bursa is. And the bursa is right below the ankle, kind of right on the back side there, you know, pretty low uh, on the, the heel. That spot is where it's going to be very tender for you just to squeeze or touch. And you may notice when you do that, when you squeeze or touch, it may feel a little puffy. You know, the, the bursa sac will swell pretty significantly. Um, whereas with the Achilles tendonitis, where the tendons inflamed, don't see a lot of swelling. Unless you have both going on. If you have both going on, then you're, you're unfortunate because that's, that starts to get pretty tricky to treat both once they're both nice and inflamed at the same time. But, uh, you know, one of the causes for like Achilles tendonitis obviously can be traumatic, right? You're jumping down uh, off of something and, you, you know, hit the ground and your feet bend back what's called dorsiflexion. So they, they bend back the other way, like if your heel's on the floor and you pull your toes and your foot off the floor, excessive force with your foot going that way. Uh, if you've not been running and you start to run or, or, or walking for exercise, you may uh, develop that. You also can have it sprinters, things like that, where you're going from a stop position to very fast and the tendon has not had time to really be kind of warmed up a little bit. So you can develop some of this tendonitis in there. Also shoe wear or footwear uh, can can cause some of this. Um, and then the difference between that and the, the bursitis, a lot of times, now bursitis can have some of the same culprits as well. But what you also see with that is uh, tight shoes. So if you're wearing tight shoes or you know, something that's putting a lot of excessive pressure on the back side of your heel back there, that's going to squeeze and irritate the bursa sac. Um, and there's also, you know, conditions as far as, or issues as far as like overtraining, like an athlete that's overtraining or, or something like that, where you can inflame that bursa sac. Um, it's, it's not uncommon. Um, they also think it's a little bit of association with the retrocalcanal bursitis with things like gout, rheumatoid arthritis, 
Um, you know, some of these different conditions apparently can put you a little more at risk uh, for developing that. And so, um, like I said, you both of those you're going to notice, obviously, pain with touching, you know, if you palpating and touching the area, tenderness on the back of the heel, um, swelling, more so swelling with the bursitis rather than the tendonitis, and then also increased pain, like trying to walk up a hill or an incline grade, uh, going up or, uh, up or down steps or stairs, really more up than down uh, in that area. And again, the versa sac is a little lower than the Achilles tendonitis, typically. Um, now, okay, we've kind of talked about what it is, how we're going to fix it, right? What are our options here? Well, I'm not a huge fan of the let's just hang out and wait because, well, number one, that's no fun. We all want to get back to our lives. And so that one I'm not a fan of. You know, some you look at go online, some stuff says just kind of wait it out and resolve itself, either one of them in maybe three to four months. Well, okay, yeah, that's not very good, especially if you're trying to exercise or things like that, or you've got vacations or trips coming up. Um, you know, that's not that's not gonna be very, very good. Uh, I take a lot of trips to uh, Branson, Missouri, uh, my family and I, and so there's a lot of walking up and down hills, and so that, that really wouldn't work out for me you know, either. So uh, the other is uh, injections. We can actually just have you know a, a steroid injection or something like that into the area. Um, that does work. I, I'm not saying it doesn't work, and some people that listen to this may say, gosh, I had an injection. I, I felt great afterwards, like instant relief. Uh, which is fine. It's really been my experience. I, I, I don't see a lot of just complete resolution with that because in most cases, there's a cause for it, right? Like, was it improper footwear? Is it some kind of mechanics of something that you're doing? Um, you know, or, or was it just one one time you jumped off of something you shouldn't have been jumping off of and you irritated it or you get out in the yard and you try to race with your kids and, you know, you're not 15 anymore and you can't do it. So something like that. Um, or you hurt yourself playing pickleball, you know, nothing against pickleball, but I, I really didn't know much about pickleball and that's a whole separate topic, uh, on that. Um, but anyway, um, so you know, the injection, I'm just not a big fan of, um, unless it's like a last resort, I would consider that next to some sort of surgical intervention. That would be my step right before surgery. My first option, obviously at home, try to put ice on it, you know, or heat, whichever one, there's all kinds of debates on that. Honestly, unless it's a, an acute injury like the first 48 hours, I usually tell people just do whatever feels the best. And, and, it, and also unless there was a surgery that was done, you know, typically post-surgery you use ice. But you haven't had surgery just around the house. This is bothering you. You know, use, you know, heat or cold, whichever feels better. Um, and then, you know, the next I would I would go to therapy. You know, you could try to do some stretches and things at home and you could look some stuff up online. I might kind of put that group in that with heat or cold, you know, kind of. Google some different stretches or exercises you could do. If that's not getting better, and I, and I, I usually give it, give it a couple of weeks. You know, if you can, try to give it a couple of weeks, see if it gets better. And if it doesn't, then I definitely would, would consider going to therapy um, and, and, and see if they can help. If your therapist, and, and this, again, is just really my preference. If, they're, if they've got you like rolling your foot on a water bottle or having you do your own stretches with a piece of TheraBand or something, uh, I'm just not a big fan of that. I don't, I don't think that's very good. There's a lot of other good um, uh, techniques and things that can be done that's more effective than doing that. And I feel like sometimes that's something easy for therapists just to kind of pacify the patient here, just do these things, this is going to get better. Well, you could have done that at home. I mean, Google will tell you to do that. Because um, by the time that you're needing some, you know, some professional care, you know, you don't want to come in and just, we're just going to throw ice on it and stretch it. Well, that didn't work already at home. So, um, but therapy, there's a lot of things with therapy that can be done. Something that I, I've done in the past and that really has worked well um, with either one of these conditions, whether it's the tendonitis or whether it's the bursitis, is I use um, a, a laser. Uh, and then also you can use like extracorporeal, extracorporeal uh, shockwave therapy. Um, you can do... Um, uh, like phonophoresis where you're using ultrasound with an anti-inflammatory or even uh, iontophoresis. I've used iontophoresis on that where you use a, an anti-inflammatory steroid medication to saturate the tissue. Now, I know I said I, I'm not a fan of the steroid injections, and this is different because this is something that's localized in the tissue. And so when you're, you know, it's kind of like putting a little water on the fire and it, and every time you do it, you put a little more water on the fire and eventually, you know, with other in conjunction with other things, the fire goes out. 
So, uh, but that's iontophoresis, and and you can Google that and see how that does. You know, you can um, you buy the pads that are already like have battery packs already on them, or you know, go to a, a clinic and uh, they they can use little machines, almost like a tens unit. And of course, you have to have the medication prescribed uh, by a physician and. Uh, you know, to, to go on that. But anyway, so the, those usually work really well as far as modalities and then, you know, progressive exercising and, and um, you know, and then return back to, you know, functional mobility, walking, running, whatever that is. And then again, the most important thing in this whole thing is having someone that has some knowledge base in biomechanics, which I assume if you're going to a therapist of some kind, that they would have biomechanics training um, to, to really look at everything and see like what causes us to start off with. You know, was this was this a one time occurrence or is this a mechanical breakdown somewhere else? Is something else weak or painful or not moving like it should? Or are you apprehensive of certain movements? You know, something that needs to be corrected. So um, that's what I would do with that. So that's that's a difference in uh, Achilles tendonitis versus retrocalcanal bursitis. And again, just a brief recap, the bursitis, the bursa sac is a little lower down, closer to your heel and the Achilles tendonitis usually is affected a little higher up. And the retrocanal uh, bursitis, calcanal bursitis, typically will swell more, um, you know, once that becomes nice and, and inflamed. So that, that's really your difference. And both can hurt with pulling your, if your heel's on the floor, pulling your foot back up and all that, that can hurt. Now, if you've got pain on the bottom of the foot and, and other things going on, you could have plantar fasciitis, you could have some, uh, some tendonitis, there's, there's different things going on, spurs. And that was the other thing too, a bone spur can also irritate this and cause the bursa sac um, to become inflamed. And so, um, you know, so it could be a couple of different things or a few different things rather. So I hope that, uh, that, that, I, that helps. And uh, like I said, you can kind of check yourself out at home. At least that gives you somewhere to go to Google. If you have pain back there, of course, my disclaimer is always consult your healthcare professional or a healthcare professional uh, before undergoing any treatments or anything. And this podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Um, I hope that you were entertained. Thank you so much for listening. If you would, please rate me five stars wherever you listen to this podcast. And thanks again. Have a great day. This podcast is brought to you by Guerrero Rehabilitation, setting the bar for rehabilitative and sports medicine care.